A squad of police surrounded someone's house. A frightened man is led out of the house, his face covered with purulent blisters. With a wild look, he tries to explain to the police that there is something in the water, but they ignore him and put him in a patrol car. He drives through the suburbs, watching his neighbors nonchalantly splash in the water and drink from a hose. The man tries to warn them of the danger, but no one hears him. Six months earlier, in Tennessee, a farming family is living their normal lives. While the youngest son, Zach, works in the yard and collects cow dung, his half-brother, Cyrus, sits back and watches him. For fun, Cyrus decides to push his brother onto a dung cart. A fight breaks out between the boys, but they are stopped by the father of the family, Nathan. A man beats his stepson for foul language and quotes lines from the Bible about brotherly love. He does not punish his own son in any way for his act, after which he calls the family for breakfast. At the table, Nathan says a prayer. Francis, Zach and Alice's mother, looks with interest at a hired worker who is fixing their well. Nathan tells his wife that the pies she made are too dry and dismissively puts the food back on the plate. This offends the woman, but she does not dare to argue with him. Francis later goes out to trade food grown on their farm. Real estate owner Charlie Davidson drives up to her stall to persuade farmers to sell their land. The man is sure that the farm has no future, but Francis says that her husband will deal with everything and sends the persistent entrepreneur away. Before going to bed, the mother enters her children's rooms to wish them good night. She decides to stay in Zach's room and discuss with him what happened in the morning. The boy does not understand why his stepfather is so strict. Francis tells her son that they should respect Nathan, because he accepted them into his family at a difficult time for them. She advises the boy to make friends with new relatives and be grateful. At night, Frances preens in front of a mirror and goes to bed with her husband, hoping for intimacy. But Nathan condemns her for her vulgar behavior and says that it is the business of a man to offer to succumb to pleasures. The woman turns away, but she can no longer sleep. Due to insomnia, she goes out into the yard and goes to the worker's house to look at the object of her desires. The man himself overtakes the woman and touches her face. Frances weakly tries to resist, but gives up when the worker starts kissing her. At this time, Nathan wakes up from the sound of window shutters. He notices that his wife is not next to him in bed. Francis, meanwhile, is cheating on her husband with the worker. Zach also wakes up due to the raging weather. He looks out the window and sees a huge bright ball of light flying towards them. It was a meteorite that fell right into their garden, leaving a trail of fire in its wake. The boy was the first to run to the crash site and, seeing a glowing stone on the ground, decided to call his neighbor, Dr. Forbes. Nathan and Francis also run out of their houses. The man notices that his wife has left the worker's house and realizes that she has cheated on him. Francis, crying, follows her husband to the meteorite. Dr. Forbes descends into the crater to take a closer look at the extraterrestrial rock and notices that it is cold. He tells the family that the meteorite will most likely cause no harm, but advises staying away from it and waiting for an accurate examination. Noticing the tension between Nathan and Francis, Drive Forbes says goodbye to the neighbors and goes home with his wife. The next day, Charlie Davidson arrives at the hospital to see Dr. Forbes. He found out that he wants to call the Environmental Protection Agency about the meteorite and tells him not to. Charlie is afraid that after the discovery of the meteorite, investors will not want to buy land in their city and he will lose a lot of money. He persuades Forbes to check the stone himself and find out if there is a need to call in experts. On the same day, Dr. Forbes, Davidson and the family of farmers gather near a meteorite that has shrunk overnight. Zach tells those present that last night he saw how the stone glowed from the inside and how the trees moved around it, although there was no wind. But adults do not take his words seriously, deciding that his imagination has run wild. Forbes hits the meteorite with a hammer and a strange brown substance begins to flow out of it. Later in the evening, the doctor tells Charles that he has done every test he knows on the stone, but due to the fact that he does not have the necessary knowledge and equipment, he does not know what exactly he needs to look for. The entrepreneur is sure that if the meteorite is not radioactive, then it is better not to talk about it. He asks Forbes' wife to influence her husband to leave everything as it is and not call the Environmental Protection Agency. At night, the meteorite glows again and oozes a brown liquid. It enters the river channel and is absorbed into the soil. Zach watches this with horror and realizes that something is wrong. The next morning, Forbes visits the farming family. He reports that he mistook the stone for a meteorite and believes that a waste tank was accidentally dropped from an airplane on their site. Also, passing by their garden, he noticed that the mysterious stone had disappeared. Everyone but Zach laughs at the ridiculousness of the situation. The boy is sure that the inexplicable phenomenon that he saw two nights in a row was not ordinary waste. After learning that his farm is safe, Nathan calmly draws water from the well and uses it for the needs of the household. Meanwhile, Carl Willis, an employee from the Tennessee administration, arrives in town. Charlie Davidson notices his car and sits down at his table at lunchtime. 
the entrepreneur found out that Willis had come to their city to assess the suitability of the land for the construction of a huge reservoir of water. It is for these purposes that Charlie asks Nathan to sell his land so that investors can use it for construction. However, Willis warns Davidson that if the Tennessee administration finds out that someone decided to cash in on this project, then they will curtail all work in one second. Charlie laughs it off and offers to take the guest around the city in his car so that he does not attract the attention of local residents. Francis goes out into the garden to gather vegetables for cooking. To her surprise, all the vegetables grew rapidly and began to look extremely appetizing, as if filled with juice inside. Rejoiced that their farm has finally begun to bear fruit, the woman starts cooking. She cuts open a huge head of cabbage and discovers that inside it is all rotten and viscous mucus flows from it. Overcoming nausea, Francis checks the tomato, and at the first cut, brown liquid squirts out of it. In the evening, Zach secretly drains the neighbor's hose into a water bottle. At this time, Dr. Forbes cannot forget about the incident and blames himself for not telling the responsible services about the meteorite. His wife seduces him and says that she wants them to move to a big city and live prosperously. If he tells about the strange stone, then Charlie Davidson can spoil all their plans. Yielding to the seductive persuasion of his beloved, a man negotiates with his conscience. At dinner, Zach notices that something is wrong with the food. He won't let Nathan get him water and says it tastes weird. Baby Alice also admits to her mother that vegetables have become disgusting in taste. Only Cyrus does not notice anything unusual and continues to greedily consume food. Mom reassures the children and says that they have been drinking this water for many years and everything is fine with it. However, the woman herself began to look unhealthy, her hair was not well groomed, and a huge blister appeared on her face. Nathan is furious at the complaints of the stepchildren and says that no one will leave the table until their plates and glasses are empty. Later, Nathan waters his apple trees and thanks God for a bountiful harvest. Suddenly, he hears the desperate cries of Cyrus, who was attacked by an enraged horse. They, along with Zack, run to the aid of the boy and help him get out through the barbed wire. Nathan decides that Cyrus himself frightened the horse, but he assures that the animal has gone crazy. While treating the boy's wounds, Francis does not notice how she draws a picture on his butt. As if waking up from a dream and realizing her strange behavior, the woman runs into the room. The oddities don't end there. Charlie Davidson arrives at Nathan's house to try again to get him to sell the land. The farmer says he knows about Mr. Willis and his plans to build a dam in the city. He is not going to sell his farm, because this year it produced an excellent harvest. The man offers Charlie a taste of one of the juicy looking apples. The entrepreneur takes a bite of the fruit and is disgusted to find it full of worms. In disbelief, Nathan cuts open another apple and sees that it, too, is infested with maggots. Alice comes to the chicken coop to feed the birds. She notices that there are a lot of feathers flying in the air, and that the chickens are pecking at food too aggressively. At some point, they attack the girl. Alice's crying is heard by her brothers and Nathan, and together they run to the chicken coop. They fight off the chickens and take Alice into the house. Zack notices a cloudy liquid oozing from the dead birds. After examining Alice, Forbes notices that Francis has lost a lot of weight and doesn't look well. He asks her to come to his reception, but because of her husband's gaze, the woman decides to be embarrassingly silent in response. In the evening, the whole family gathers in the living room. Nathan grumbles and promises to sue the company that destroyed his entire crop with their waste. Francis sews up her sock with a wild look and starts humming a tune from the TV. The woman then begins to moan and cry in pain, and her family notices her forcibly sewing the sock to her palm. Zack and Nathan try to stop her, but she forcefully pushes them away from her. Eventually, Cyrus and his father manage to grab the woman and drag her into the room. Frightened, Zack calls the doctor to check on his mom, but as soon as Forbes arrives at their house, Nathan and Cyrus pretend that nothing strange has happened. As the doctor leaves, Nathan hits Zack in the face with a newspaper. He forbids him to tell strangers about their family problems without his permission. Returning home, Dr. Forbes notices that strange steam is coming from the neighbor's well, and decides to take a water sample for analysis. The next day, Mr. Willis comes to the farmer's house. A distraught Francis attacks him with a knife in her hands. Nathan stops his wife in time, pushing her away from the frightened inspector. The farmer drives away the uninvited guest, but he himself does not intend to stay in this madhouse. This time, Forbes decided to take charge and find out what was happening on his neighbor's farm. He brings a water sample to the lab for analysis, and a medical officer tells him that the results will be ready in a few days. Francis' health is rapidly deteriorating. At the table, she talks incoherent things and eats food with her hands, and her face is already almost completely covered with festering blisters. Nathan and Cyrus prefer to ignore her condition. It hurts Zack to watch his mother, so he decides to leave the table. Nathan orders him to take the plate of food to his sister's room, but the boy discreetly throws the food down the toilet. At the barn, Nathan notices that his animals are starting to rot alive. He looks around in horror, trying to figure out what's going on. 
worms and beetles crawl out of the rotting cattle and pounce on the farmer and his son. Cyrus's face began to blister as well. At night, Nathan sits next to his wife tied to the bed and reads lines from the Bible about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The man is sure that the Lord is punishing his family because of the sins of Francis. Nathan falls asleep and his wife manages to break free of her bonds. Hearing a strange noise downstairs, Zack decides to check what's going on. Francis suddenly appears before him. Her face has turned into a slimy mask of pus, and her hair has turned gray and fell out. The woman screams and attacks her son with a fire poker. Nathan wakes up from the noise and forcefully drags the woman into the basement, continuing to quote the Bible. Cyrus watches everything that happens and with a crazy laugh tells his father to kill Francis. Alice, seeing the state of her beloved mother, begins to sob. The results of the water analysis come to the laboratory. The laboratory assistant informs Dr. Forbes that the water contains a new unknown substance that completely changes the structure of water and can be life-threatening. Realizing what a terrible mistake he made, Forbes escapes from the laboratory and leaves a message for Mr. Willis. He asks the inspector to come to the farmer's house to tell him about the terrible discovery. The doctor also tries to warn Davidson about the contaminated water, but Davidson has already arrived at his house. Charles decides to take drastic action and asks Mrs. Forbes to help him persuade the family of farmers to sell their land. Then the last transaction will be completed and Forbes will have a prosperous future after selling his house to investors. The companions approach Nathan's house, where they are greeted by growling dogs. Mrs. Forbes decides to run away from them to the car, but they catch up with him and gnaw him to death. Davidson hides from the angry animals in the basement, not yet knowing what kind of monster is there. He hears a noise and decides to light the room with matches, after which Frances pounces on him. She digs her claws into his neck, and the man dies in agony. Instead of poisoned veggies, Zack brings store-bought food and clean water to Alice's dinner. After feeding his sister, he decides to visit his mother in the basement. There he is met by his stepfather and says that he carried Francis back to the room. He takes the boy out of the basement, and he does not notice the corpse of Charlie Davidson. Nathan forces his stepson to show the contents of his backpack. There he finds a flask of clean water and becomes enraged. The man walks out into the light and Zack sees that his face is also blistered and his eyes are wild. Zack tries to explain to his stepfather that the water from their well is contagious, but he pounces on him with a tire iron. While chasing the boy, Nathan trips over a chair and falls, and Zack manages to escape. Alice hears a noise outside the door and decides to leave the room. There, she is met by Cyrus, who is also completely turned into a monster. Zack comes to his sister's aid and stuns his stepbrother with a bat. Afterwards, he hides Alice in a closet and asks her to sit quietly while he calls for someone to help. Meanwhile, Nathan boards up all the doors. Thick smoke begins to spread from under the floorboards throughout the house. Dr. Forbes manages to get inside the house through the back door, but Nathan finds him and kills him with a hammer. Zack comes down and tries to go outside. His stepfather attacks him again and begins to choke him. The boy kicks the opponent between the legs and escapes, but trips over the body of Dr. Forbes. Nathan corners his stepson and he is already preparing to die. But suddenly, Mr. Willis runs around the corner and stabs Nathan with a pitchfork. The house begins to gradually collapse and Zack and the inspector rush upstairs to pick up Alice. They are attacked by the awakened Cyrus, but the boy throws his brother down the stairs. Having gotten out of the house, Willis and the girl run to the car, and Zack looks for his mother. But the woman has completely turned into a rotting substance and it is no longer possible to help her. Fleeing from the crumbling house, Zack runs past the body of Cyrus, who grabs him by the leg, but the next moment the monster is already tightly pressed down by the fallen concrete. Nathan comes out of the kitchen towards him and tries to slap him. Zack dodges his hulking stepfather and impales him deeper into the pitchfork. The boy is taken by Mr. Willis and they drive away from the accursed house. Several months pass. The news talks about the tragedy that happened on the farm due to radioactive water. We are shown the detention of a man from the beginning of the story, it turns out to be Mr. Willis. According to the expert, the inspector was also infected and because of this he had a nervous breakdown, but now his condition is completely controlled. He also assures that the well with radioactive water has been destroyed and there is no longer any danger to people. At the end of the story, Mr. Willis' worst fears are confirmed. We see a bright light coming from the depths of the earth. The earth's crust cracks in half and a viscous poisonous liquid breaks out. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.